What's up guys? Hello, welcome back. My name is Amanda. And we are starting off this week with a Planty of the Week video. So for this week's Planty of the Week, we have the beautiful cardboard fern, a favorite of mine. I think I say that almost every Planty of the Week video. So the cardboard fern, a very cool plant, very underrated in my opinion. Now this plant I've also seen called Mexican Psychid, which is a little bit more appropriate considering it's not a true fern, but its actual name is the Zamia Furfurasi? Furfurasia? Furfurasia? I 100% know that's not how it's actually pronounced, so don't try to pronounce it that way. But the name will tell you it is definitely not a fern nor is it in the fern family. It is part of the Zamia genius and it belongs to the Psychid. But anyway, this genius contains more than 50 plus species. I think that's pretty cool. And now that we know it's a Psychid, we know that it's been around for a very long time because most Psychids have been around since before dinosaurs or around dinosaur time. So I think that's pretty cool. I have also seen this called a, some type of palm, like a cardboard palm I've also seen. And it's not a palm either so it's not a fern it's not a palm so the nickname is going to be a little bit misleading but it does have palm like growth habits one of them being very obvious with the way the leaves grow this plant grows pinnate leaves which pretty much just means it has little leaflets on either side of the stem that grow in the same pattern and that's pretty common for most palms so that can be a reason why maybe this has a nickname of cardboard palm and I feel like the nickname of cardboard fern is very obvious because it does look a little fern like, especially with newer growth that comes in. So I can definitely see where both of those nicknames came from. But it can be a little misleading, especially if you're one of those people that refuse to buy any fern because of their high humidity needs and moisture needs. And a lot of people say all they get are gnats and dead leaves when they own ferns so I feel like a lot of people kind of stray away from this plant because they think it's going to need similar requirements to a actual fern which is nice because this is quite the opposite of a fern it requires little to no maintenance when it comes to growth patterns you are just going to get all the shoots coming from this one trunk as they get older of course they're gonna get larger very full some start to kind of droop downward. I've only ever seen that when they're grown in the wild in prime condition, so you might not ever get close to that in your home. Um, hello. I forgot to talk about the coolest part of this plant. I don't know how I forgot, but a reason why it's called a cardboard plant is because the texture is cardboard-like. They still have a fuzzy feel to them, especially the newer leaves. Like these ones are very pliable and soft still. But yeah, you can definitely see the fuzzies on the stem of the baby along with the leaflets. And I did forget to mention there are little spikies on the stem. Nothing crazy, you're not gonna stab yourself. It's not gonna get stuck in your finger like it would a cacti or something. The newer shoots don't really have those. I think this one's starting to develop just a couple. There's one right there. Okay, this interruption's over. So starting off with sunlight, these guys do need full sunlight. That can be one con maybe if you're wanting to get one of these and you don't have adequate sunlight. But that's what grow lights are for. You can totally supplement with grow lights, but I would say six-ish hours of direct sunlight is prime. If you can't give that, then as much indirect sunlight as you can possibly get. Now you might not kill this plant if you don't give it proper sunlight, but it will grow a tad bit leggy. When I was growing this one, for example, before I had it in proper sunlight, this leaf emerged and it looks great it's still fine i love it but you can tell it's a little bit leggy versus these guys that have that short compact look with the leaflets which is normal versus this one that's a little bit more spread out i mean this one is still pretty juvenile the leaves are soft do not have that cardboardy feel that the mature leaves have so maybe it'll kind of fix itself but already you can tell it's a little leggy so maybe just keep that in mind if you are wanting one of these and you don't have a great amount of sunlight. A northern window can still do the job. You might get slow growth, a little bit leggy growth possibly, especially if you're not supplementing with the grow light. But if that's okay with you, then by all means the plant will still be fine. 
But of course, southern, which is ideal for most plants, a southern window would be great. If not southern, then eastern or western. I don't even have a western or southern window that I'm able to use in my house. I just keep mine right in front of my eastern windowsill. The other two that I have, I kind of keep undergrow lights slash still by that eastern window and they still all do great. For watering, you really only have to water these plants when you notice the soil is dry. The one thing I would be careful of with this plant is overwatering, especially if you're not being careful when you're watering it and you're just kind of throwing it on and you are wetting this trunk over and over again, you might really be setting yourself up for some root rot or mold or you plant dying. So when you water, maybe just water around the trunk like you would with any normal cycad or any plant that has a trunk base. You wouldn't really wanna soak that. And with water, humidity. So humidity, these guys do not need ample amounts of humidity. You don't need to make sure they're in a cabinet. You don't need to make sure you have a humidifier right by them like you would with an alocasia or something. These can thrive in any room in your house without added humidity as long as the room temperature is at least like 60 degrees, which I think is pretty normal. If your home is consistently under 60 degrees, then maybe I would consider investing in a humidifier or keeping it in an extra sunny spot. But as long as your home isn't consistently under 60 degrees by like a huge amount, then you should be fine with whatever temperature you keep your home at normally. Now these guys are known to be slow growers, but of course the more sun you give them, you might be able to increase the speed at which they grow as well as humidity. I don't think they would complain. I mean, not that they could literally complain, but I don't think they would suffer if you did keep them in somewhere with higher humidity. Now for soil. So these plants are very hardy and adaptable, which is great. And I think is very common for most cycads, <laughs> but they can totally adapt to a variety of different types of medium soils, whatever you want to use, but they will thrive in any sandy, really well draining soils if you can manage that. If you don't really want to go out and buy anything new or you don't really want to deal with the super sandy soil or for whatever reason, then that's totally okay. Like I said, this plant is pretty adaptable to most mediums. As long as your soil isn't going to just hold extra moisture, then you're totally fine. You could even get by with just a cacti potty mix, adding some extra perlite, throwing in some sand maybe. If you really don't wanna deal with sand, like I said, at least just throw in some extra perlite into that soil and you should be good to go. Now for temperature, so if you're keeping these indoors, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. They can tolerate heat way better than they can tolerate the cold very low temperatures and frost. These plants will not like, you will be most likely killing them. So like I live here in Colorado, I definitely can't put these outside. All my house plants I normally keep inside anyway, just cause I don't wanna deal with pests and stuff. So, but just keep that in mind, frost damage and cold damage can be very detrimental to these plants and you don't really wanna put them through that. So if you can just keep them around that 60 to 75 temperature, that's ideal which I think is pretty normal for most homes. Now for fertilizing. So these guys are not very heavy feeders. You don't have to be really super into them with fertilizing. Like I think orchids are very intense with how to fertilize them and when and with what. But these guys are, like I said, are very low maintenance. So if you do wanna fertilize them, you could do it just a couple times a year and that should be perfect. Or if you use a very slow release mild fertilizer, like I use Newt, then you can do it with every water if you want. That's normally what I do and they've been totally fine. Sometimes I even skip it and I just do normal waterings and they're fine. If I'm doing a fish fertilizer with all my plants on one day, then I'll throw it in that one, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to fertilize these guys, which is great if you want a low maintenance plant. These guys aren't really known to be super susceptible to a specific type of pest. Now, of course, it does not mean they're not ever going to get pests. They could still get mealies, aphids, white flies, anything. But the one good thing is that you will at least be able to <laughs> clean off the leaves pretty easily. They're hardy, so whatever you decide to use on them isn't going to kill them. Now, when I first got this plant, it was huge and it was infested with mealies, unfortunately. So I had to do a lot of chopping and treatment <laughs> and it's totally fine these were original leaves on it this one was not i did end up chopping these ones when they were in the pot only because their leaves looked a little too far gone and i didn't want to deal with cleaning those guys with the mealies so i just chopped them this has been new growth and i did let it 
um, dry out a little too much. You can tell it's a little crispy, which is unfortunate, but it'll bounce back. So if they do get attacked with any type of pest, at least know that they're pretty easy to clean. So that's a plus. When it comes to potting or repotting these guys, they are slow growers, like I mentioned. So you will not need to be repotting them often, and they also don't like that. Their root systems can be a little bit sensitive, so you don't want to be potting them in different pots all the time. They won't need to be repotted every couple months or even every year. When choosing your pot, a good thing to remember is just to choose a pot that is slightly bigger than the root ball. You don't want this plant drowning in extra soil because that just means excess water it's sitting in, but you also don't want to be suffocating the roots. So with both these pots, just looking at it, the pot is only slightly bigger than the trunk. Like this one, it may look like it is too big for the trunk, but it is slightly bigger than the root ball. So you also don't want to completely cover the trunk. You want to leave the trunk sticking out. If you were to cover the whole trunk with soil, it would probably rot and die. Just like you would with most cycads or even the codex plants. Codex plants? I don't have any of those or I would show you, but... I believe with those ones, you don't want to bury your trunk. Now, when it comes to propagating, unfortunately, these plants cannot be easily propagated. The most common method, or I believe only method, is by seed. So, if you are lucky enough to have one of yours flower and produce a seed, if you have a female, of course, then you could try your hand at that. I do not have any to show you for that, but the seeds are pretty cool. I'll put in some photos. They're red, and I think they're pretty big as well. You would pot those up and care for them just like you would with most seeds. Ensure that they have high humidity, heat, sunlight, all that good stuff when it comes to seeds. And you wouldn't be able to really wait for an offshoot for this plant to propagate from there because that wouldn't really happen so you would get these shoots like normal from the trunk but you wouldn't get a shoot like coming off the side like you would with a lot of other plants like ZZ's for example you might get those off shoots and you just pop those off lastly these plants are known to be toxic so especially animals humans ingesting them not good I've also read that you should wear gloves when dealing with these plants when it comes to potting transplanting stuff like that honestly I have never worn gloves when dealing with these. <laughs> I believe most psychids are toxic though, so just keep that in mind if you have pets, kids, maybe just keep that kind of away from them. I keep them in my plant room and my dogs aren't normally allowed in here unless I'm in here and even then it's short periods of time because they are monsters. But yeah, toxic. Not good for your dogs, cats, animals, babies, yourself. So if you don't want to wear gloves, I can't say that's bad because I don't do it but I do at least make sure that I thoroughly wash my hands after I deal with them just in case I get a little bit of sap or drippings or anything so when it comes to overall maintenance like pruning these plants need like nothing so there's nothing to prune the leaves aren't normally going to be dying off and you're gonna be chopping them I mean there's mixed information out there anyway about whether or not you should even cut off dying leaves or just let them fall off on their own. Honestly, you can't win no matter what you pick. Someone's always gonna say something about the way you choose to do things. But just know that these plants need like zero pruning. I did forget to mention this in the beginning, which I normally mention before any of my Plant of the Week videos, that these plants are native to Central America. So that should kind of help tie things in when it comes to care and environments they like, especially when it comes to sunlight. I'm not tolerating frost or cold weather well, so keep that in mind. I think that pretty much covers all the care for these plants. Like I said, I think these are underrated plants. They are very low maintenance. These are great starter plants for people that are just getting into house plants or people that enjoy plants and want them, but they have a very busy lifestyle. They want very low maintenance plants. These are prime example of low maintenance plants. To sum it up, as long as you give them lots of sunlight, just remember to water them when the soil runs dry and kind of just leave them alone, they're gonna thrive. <laughs> of course, comment, like, subscribe if you'd like. I enjoy all of it. Um, I mean, I appreciate all of it and enjoy, I guess, whatever. Let me know if you wanna see a specific plant for next week's planning of the week. I do enjoy doing these and like these videos the most so far so i hope you learned something and i hope that the name cardboard firm does not deter you from getting the plant anymore because these are 10 out of 10. i would honestly probably own more if they were easier to find in my area <laughs> but i am also kind of a sucker for anything frond like or psychids in general 
love them. So I will see you guys in my video for later this week, and I hope you guys have a good day, good night, wherever you are. 